Let me push together sums of squares total so it's not spread out. But again, let's just remember that the sums of squares total is being partitioned into these two components. The sums of squares of air, that is the sums of squares within each group of each individual versus the mean for each group, and the sums of squares for treatment. That is the deviations between the predicted score for each individual and the grand mean. Let's take a look at the sums of squares for treatment in a little more detail. Now the sums of squares for treatment as we've seen it is the sum for all individuals in every group of the predicted scores minus the grand mean. You may have noticed though that the predicted score for any individual is simply their group's mean, which will be the same group mean for every individual in the same group. For instance, Tom had a predicted score as the delta's group mean, but everybody else in the delta group also had that predicted score. So another way we can write the sums of squares for treatment is to say the number of people in each group, the n sub j, multiplied by the deviation between the group mean for the group j minus the grand mean. This piece is simply the t sub j's, that is the treatment offset between the grand mean and the mean for that group. So we can write the sums of squares treatment in a little bit more simple of a form. The number of people in each group multiplied by the treatment offset for that group squared. And that will be the sums of squares for treatment. Now let's remember why we were doing this. We're forming an F statistic that allows us to find the mean square for treatments divided by the mean square for error. Those mean squares, if the null hypothesis is true, should be estimating the same variance. That is, if the null hypothesis is true, they're really both estimates of the same error. But we have to tackle one final component, the degrees of freedom for the numerator and the degrees of freedom for the denominator. Once we know that, we'll know which of those F distributions we should be comparing our F statistic against. So let's pause and take a minute to decompose the degrees of freedom for the analysis of variance.